Hello, it's uh, Paul Beck with the Gain, and I'm continuing th my discussions on the just released WMO statement on the state of the global climate in 2018. Okay, the, the World Meteorological Organization report, and I'll just continue where I left off in my last video, if I can go and find the place here. Okay, ozone layer heat. Okay, I talked about deoxygenation of the oceans. And now the warming trends of the Southern Ocean. Okay, so basically what you see here is this is the, on this side, on the left side, we have, so we have latitude here. This is in the Southern Oceans. And we have the change in temperature. Um, the change in temperature um, the delta T, okay, and over here on the right hand side you have the change in salinity in practical salinity units. So the the uh, ocean is typically 3.5 percent salt, but in terms of practical salinity units, um, it's uh, 35 or so is 3.5 percent. Okay, um, so this, this is changes in terms of that scale. So what we can see is that the, this is near the surface, this is with depth. So the oceans are warming significantly. This is down to a thousand meters or so here. Um, and this is, the, uh, this is the data and this is a model. Okay, um, and this is a different model here. So what we can see is definite warming of the oceans with depth. Um, okay, this is, this is delta T in terms of degrees Celsius, so 0.6, you know, anything more than 0.6. It takes a lot of energy to heat water. Okay, so, the, but, so this is, as I said, 93% of the heat trapped from climate change is going into the oceans, and this is what it's doing in the southern oceans. This is the changes in salinity. Um, okay, so these areas are becoming the chain the saltier and these areas are becoming less salty okay in the southern ocean so massive changes this is the heat content global ocean heat content change for the 0 to 700 meter layer relative to the 1981 to 2010 baseline okay so what you can see is two different data sets trying to measure the same thing just different approaches and you can see a rapidly increasing upward rise in ocean heat content. Now, one thing this does is it causes the water to expand, increasing sea level. It's only one of the components. So this is what the sea level is doing, fitted to a quadratic function. So it's nowhere near linear. It's, it's increasing at a nonlinear rate. Okay, there is uh, ups and downs here. This is if you break it down into all of the components. Okay, so there's um, terrestrial water storage. Okay, so some year, if it rains a lot over land, that water, which is mostly from evaporated seawater, right, falls on the land. It can stay on the land for several years, causing a trend, a, a downward trend here temporarily. Same thing here. Okay, eventually it comes back into the ocean. So that's that component. There's Antarctic ice sheet amounts. There's Greenland ice sheet increasing 250 gigatons a year both of those roughly now glaciers that are other glaciers around the world that aren't greenland and antarctica steric changes what that means is the water's warming it expands okay that's been the biggest component up to now and this is the sum of all the components and the residual if you sum all the components and and try to match it to what you see from tide from gauges and things uh sea level gauges, then there's a residual with the difference, and they're getting closer and closer, but there's still some um, something missing. Um, this is the paper that's referred to, came out last year, Global Sea Level Budget, 93 to present. And what's interesting is it breaks down the components. So I'll just point out a couple things. It's linked to in the, um, in this article, it's, if you click on, if you just uh, look for this article, Okay, I just posted that into Google, and uh, it brings me to the actual article. 
the ocean thermal expansion is about 42 is causing has since um, since 1993 to the present period the rise in sea level 42 percent of the rise in sea level is from the um, ocean thermal expansion from Greenland 21 percent of the sea level rise is from Greenland 15 percent is from Antarctica um, sorry um, 21 percent is from glaciers Okay, 15% is from Greenland, and 8% is from Antarctica. Okay, and these glaciers are mountain glaciers, and glaciers um, that are non-Greenland, non-Antarctica. Okay, so those, that's sort of the, the budget, and there's a couple things that bre it breaks it down. If you go through all of the details, you can do so. And I just want to go to the end and just point out a couple things here, which I found which I want to point out. Okay, uh, go down. Like I say, look at the diagrams and stuff. Um, it's a very long paper. Uh, okay, let's go down here. Where, where am I? Okay, here we go. So table 13. This is from 93 to present. So this is the total global mean sea level, 3.5 plus or minus 0 0.2 millimeters per year. We're up to 3.7 in the latest year. Thermosteric, okay, the, the ocean's warming. So that's caused the, the, the largest component of that 3.5. About a third is just the warming of the ocean. Water expands. Glaciers. Okay, 0 0.74, Greenland 0 0.76, Antarctica 0 0.42. TWS is terrestrial water storage. Okay, so if it rains a lot over land, then that causes a slight drop temporarily of sea level. If you sum all the components up, um, and uh, you can get the, um, the total amount. Okay, now this is... Uh, Okay, there was something else. So that was the total budget. Okay, so from basically, so from basically this paper, you have you can generate this graph and look at all the different components of sea level rise. I mean, it's worth a separate video on its own. Now the the um, this is a time series showing this is the partial pressure of CO two in the oceans. Okay, so it's increasing. More and more CO two is going into the oceans. This is in the Hawaii data the Bermuda data, and uh, Canary Islands data. So we're getting more and more CO2 in the, the, in the seawater, and that drops the pH. So that drops the pH. This is the measurements in Hawaii, Bermuda, a lot more fluctuation in Bermuda, you know, annual fluctuation, and in the Canary Islands. Okay, so the ocean acidification is a huge issue. Of course, sea ice, we know that sea ice is, is, is severely decreasing in the Arctic, also in Antarctica in the last few years. The Antarctic ice sheet mass balances. Okay, so this is a decade, 79 for a decade to 89, 89 to 99, 99 to 2009, 2009 to 2017. Basically, look at what's happening. So the red is, is a decline of ice. The blue is a growth of ice, and as we go to this, there's almost no growth anywhere. Huge declines, huge mass loss of Antarctica. The summary is, okay, so 79 to 89, Antarctica lost 40 gigatons per year. 89 to 99, that increased to 50 gigatons per year in this time period. Look what happened now, a huge explosion of loss of ice. 99 to 2009, 166 gigatons loss per year, and now we're up to 252 gigatons. So 2009 to 2017, the average loss, 252 gigatons per year. You know, a huge increase in melt rates from Antarctica. Similar things from Greenland. This is the glaciers around the world, and it's showing the annual mass change in um, meters of water equivalent and or 
uh, and you can see this this huge decline you know that's ever ever worsening of glaciers this is from the world glacier monitoring service um and let's go down and see the okay so now this is uh precipitation so this is um cumulative or sorry consecutive consecutive wet days okay so if it rains each each if it rains every day for 10 days that would be 10 con consecutive wet days this is showing the scale here. So what you can see here, 150 here, parts of India, you know, parts of South America. Okay, this is the ITCZ basically following this, the Intertropical Conver Convergence Zone. And this is the RX5 is the highest five-day rainfall total. Okay, this is in 2018. So you can see where the rainfall total is the highest okay um so this is millimeters in five days so 200 millimeters will have fallen in this with this color 200 millimeters fell in five days that was the highest rainfall you know up to going up to 400 here so what you can see is you know areas here we're having um the these uh you know it's all or nothing happening with with rainfall you get drought in some regions you get massive rainfall in other regions leading to flooding etc this is uh, sort of a distribution showing the annual total precipitation um, expressed as a percentile of the 1951 to 2010 reference. So what you can see is you can see the wettest areas are the green and the driest areas are, are the browns. And what you can see, basically some of the dry areas are getting drier and the wetter areas are getting wetter. This is cyclone, um, accumulated cyclone energy. Okay, and what you can see is the cyclones are getting stronger and stronger. Okay, there was a big increase here, a drop, and they're getting much stronger again. And this is in the eastern North Pacific Basin. Okay, um, this is, uh, you know, an example of the rainfall from a hurricane, Hurricane Florence, that hit the U.S. Um, 18th of September, 2018. You can see the huge amounts of rainfall 20 to 30 inches of rainfall in all of these regions of course there was massive flooding huge damages um this is europe the Euro a europe heat wave during this is uh basically july temperature anomaly um you know areas that were look at norway here you know massive amounts of heat in july well beyond the norm Okay, so it goes through and gives a uh, textual description of many of the things that are happening. Um, and then there's food risks, okay, number of undernourished people, countries with high exposure to climate extremes. Um, this is in millions, you know, 500 million, 600 million people undernourished, undernourished in country, this is in countries with low exposure to climate extremes. You know, climate is generating poverty, it's generating food problems, it's generating population displacement. So this is, uh, th there's a lot of information here on how it's moving populations on, this is heat and health, changing the number of heat wave um, exposure events. So this is millions per year, people being affected by heat wave. Okay, not too many here, but a fluctuation, a huge ramping up. You know, in the last decade or so, huge numbers of people being affected by heat waves. I mean, we're having them in Ottawa, the effects of heat waves on human health. So this is an example of in the UK. So this is the temperature from 23rd of May to September in the UK. So when there's temperature spikes, then the mortality rates go up. So this is the number of deaths, um, the daily mortality in people age 65 or over in England. So people 65 or over, disproportionately affected. You can see a, a spike in the mortality rates. There will also be one in, in uh, very young people. Um, you know, and there's stuff on air pollution and there's lots of other stuff, air quality um, and so on. So in conclusion, this WMO report is an excellent report that outlines all of the, most of the factors that are, we're facing.